What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Wednesday, June 26th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, EU sanctions 17 ships that carried oil for Russia. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Next up, Burvo Energy announces 320 megawatt power purchase agreement with Southern California Ederson. Love that. Next up, German yep. airline Lufthansa hikes tickets prices by up to $77 due to environmental costs. Interesting one there. Forget shale. Canada's oil sands are having their moment in the sun. Great article here. Finally, in the new segment, hedge fund makes 20% a year for last decade. Targeting uranium MA. Super, super interesting. Yep. You will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today, cover what the API guesstimated as what you'll see with the crude oil inventories today. And then we'll finish up with Texas natural gas prices turn negative, even amid heat wave, an absolute crushing blow to the Permian Basin. So we will cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies over there with the EU. Holy smokes, Batman, Michael. EU sanctioned 17 ships that carried oil for Russia. However, buried in this article are a couple nuggets. A total of 27 ships were sanctioned, including two ships that stored LNG and general cargo vessels that carried restricted goods or linked to sanctioned entities. Michael, Russia just passed Japan for the fourth largest economy in the world. You know what Putin said after he saw this list of 17 sanct ships being sanctioned? Go ahead, sanction more, please. Make hey, my sanction hey. more. Hey. <laughs> what this is just nuts. I can't believe that they're doing this again. But buried in there was the nugget that everybody was denying that the dark fleet was gonna have LNG tankers. I've been saying for a while it's there. So anyway, we're off to the next story here. You gotta love a good. Hey, 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 let's go, hey, let's go to Verbo Energy announces 320 megawatt power purchase agreements with Southern California Edison. I love me some good geothermal. I love nuclear geothermal. I'm a geothermal kind of guy. You know why, Michael? Well, our great oil field service companies know how to do geothermal yep. i mean we can drill holes in texas and god bless them for showing them how to do it there in california this is actually very cool this announcement is another milestone in california's commitment to clean zero carbon electricity said california energy commissioner chair david hoschild Enhanced geothermal systems complement our abundant wind and solar, providing critical base load when those resources are limited. This is key to ensuring reliability. Finally, something that is reliable, and that's geothermal. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Uh, they have already, Fervo, Michael, has already done 53 megawatt power from Cape Station to California Community Choice Aggregators 2021. I love them. I got to go get the CEO on the podcast. That's pretty darn cool. You do? It'll be very interesting. I'd love to do, a, you know, one of our favorite podcasts that we do is the Deal Spotlight. I'd love to do a geothermal deal spotlight. Oh, sweet. I I would be loved. I'd love a little bit behind the curtain because I'm not even sure how these things work. It's basically you drill, you drill for these, you know, geothermal. Basically, I mean, from a low level, what does it do? You're drilling a, you're drilling a well. And the well, right. the goal is to produce water that then you run through a turbine and that turbine spins and produces electricity. And, so, and, you build, and normally you build a closed loop system so that the closed loop system is once it comes through the turbine, then it goes back into the ground to reheat okay. again. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So it, it works. So I would love to look at this. I'm a big fan of geothermal if they can figure out some of the. You know, obviously, there's still a, a, a retrofitting of the grid that needs to happen. But, you know, we like oh, yeah. what Fervo Energy is doing. They've raised a boatload of money. So hopefully they can they can figure this out. But the fact that they're able to do business and get this stuff permitted in California is a testament to they've shown something at least 
Oh, absolutely. I hats off to him. All right. Hey, let's go to German Airline. German Airline loose Lufthansa. Lufthansa. I'll, I'll do that one for you. You already sneezed once today. Hikes a ticket up by 77% due to environmental waves. For a little inside baseball here, our producer had to cut the, the show here just a second ago because an eardrum went rolling by his, his monitor there. It was horrible. Anyway, German Airline said that it would had add an environmental cost surcharge ticket prices soon this week, which could be as high as 72 euros or $77 for some flights. It's intended to cover part of this steadily increasing additional cost due to regulatory environmental requirements. Uh, Lusana said in a statement pointing out regulations from the European Union and International Civil Aviation Organization. That's pretty amazing. It depends on the flight route and fare between one euro and 72. Well, it has all to do with the sustainable fuel quotas and how much <laughs> of the sustainable fuel is being used. And, you know, and what they're trying to do is say, because that comes into effect at the beginning of 2025, they're trying to get enough in the barrel right now before the rule comes into an act. You know, according to the International Air Transport Association, so, they say that sustainable aviation fuel could cover around 65 percent of emissions reduction in the aviation in the aviation in the aviation industry, which within the EU needs to be net zero by 2050. Right. So. If you weigh 400 pound human, either male or female, and you wander in and you say, may I have another extender, seatbelt extender, do, do you have a prorated tax increase again on top of your normal increase fare? Should you yeah, be paying? They're gonna have a, they should have a scale when you get onto the plane to see how much how much of the extra fee you have to charge. <laughs> people get it. You, you'd like to think people get into shape pretty quickly. If you said... If you said, if you gave people a weight target to have lower flights, I guarantee you'd get people do, working out. Oh, more. absolutely. I think that's a great you idea. You might get you on a treadmill. Oh, if I didn't have a broken leg, I would be right there with you. That's a good point. All yeah. right, let's go up to Ca Canada. Oh, Canada. Canada. Forget shale. Canada's oil sales are having their moment. Do you know what Canada and Oklahoma State have in common? Hey. There's only one word or one syllable that everybody, that they all know. Oh, Canada. That's the only thing they know in the whole thing. And then that OSU, Oklahoma site, the fight song. You, oh, yep. uh, yeah. OSU. Okay, there you go. Canada oil signs were once again dirty. Yeah, everybody's like, ooh, oil signs. Producers have been the top performing companies in the energy sector over the last several years. They gained an average of 37% over the last 12 months, outpacing the index, the index of the largest U.S. energy comp companies. I did not know that. By 19%. The two biggest, Canadian Natural Resources, NQ, CNQ, down, and the other one, Imperial Oil, and Chevron CNX. Wow. Part of that is because the new Trans Mountain Oil mm -hmm. Pipeline is pumping out like you wouldn't believe, and China is buying every single drop that they possibly can. Yep. And again, there's a difference between the oil sands producers up there in Canada and the actual shale producers, which, you know, you're talking about the Montney and a few other formations up right. there that are kind of like the Permian of Canada. But the oil sands is is definitely different. I mean, you know, this article goes on to point out that, you know, considering the fact that it costs a lot more to drill the oil sands, a.k.a. more CapEx up front, you know, right. super expensive to operate, huge environmental footprint relative to that, but also huge discounts on the oil once it's produced because there was no capacity to transport it anywhere. So you saw these huge differentials. Right. And now that they've got a pipeline to pump it out and Canada wants to buy everything they can, God bless them, pump everything they possibly can. Yeah. I wish we had that heavy oil sands instead of buying it from Venezuela or Iran. It would yeah. make a lot more sense, but hey, what do I know? Let's go to hedge fund making 20% a year for the last decade targets uranium and MA. 
Michael, we don't give investment advice here. We can barely sing an OSU fight song, but it's a strategic asset. And with the, the, the big thing that's going on right now is the boom in nuclear around the world. Next Gen counts L1 as its biggest shareholder after the Australian firm first invent, invested in early 2021. The fund's uranium stock position, positioning has weathered the swings. I see all of this as just nothing but great things. Over mm -hmm. the past five years, the metal has climbed 233%, more than triple the gains in gold and copper, even a slight. You know, once we buy all of the uranium that the Clintons sold to Russia back, it's going to be having, there's going to, there's going to be a whole new demand for uranium. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty crazy that, you know, your best long short fund, obviously based in Australia, has been literally performing at the level of Peruia by only trading uranium. It's crazy. Here's the quote from Amir Nakik. He's the head of research. It's such a strategic asset that once they get their final approvals, it's a very high likelihood that it would be a good takeover candidate for one of the majors. So, I mean, basically what they're doing is nice. front running uranium stuff. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I had interviewed another uranium, new uranium company for in the U.S., and they're using drilling like oil and gas drilling and siphoning out the water out of the fracking. So they're fracking for uranium. Boy, that's pretty cool. Hey, if it, it works. Is. It is kind of crazy. Off to you now. All right. Well, we'll we'll cover the 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 interesting API crude oil inventory guesstimate as long with oil prices. But before we do that, as always, guys, thank you for checking us out on the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Hit the description below for all of links to the timestamps, links to the article. Links to our sub stack. As we mentioned yesterday, we are launching tomorrow's news today. If you can't tell with Jim Kramer screaming behind me, he, he comes on at 5 p.m., which means we're actually recording this the night before it gets released. So as you listen to this on Wednesday, we're actually recording this Tuesday night. Meaning so, 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 so. Yeah, Sorry. meaning if you subscribe to our sub stack, we'll give you tomorrow's news today and get you an early access to the stories that we cover on here. So go check that out, guys, theenergynewsbeat.substack.com. You can also check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. But let's go ahead and move over into, into overall prices, guys. Markets had a decent day on Tuesday. You know, we were up about four-tenths of a percentage point with the S&P 500. NASDAQ rallied a little bit, 1.16 percentage points, two- and 10-year yields, fairly flat. Dollar index up to a tenth of a percentage point. Bitcoin up three percentage points, still trading about $62,000 per coin. Crude oil lost a little bit off the off its standard today. Opened about eighty one fifty, dropped to its closing price eighty six eighty dollars and sixty eight cents. Mainly off the back, if we can go ahead and throw this up off the back of a very interesting API crude oil inventory guesstimate. Numbers come out nine hundred and fourteen thousand barrel build is the guesstimate. As you guys listen to this at about ten thirty a.m. you or nine thirty a.m. Central Standard Time, you uh, the EIA will release exactly what their inventory numbers are obviously if you have access to some pro proprietary data you'll know better and, and as always the, the eia lets everybody know uh, uh too late but you know really what's kind of the other thing that really hurt oil prices today was we had some fairly weak u.s consumer confidence data u.s consumer confidence decreased in june the and you know while some of that consumer confidence was a little bit higher in 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 in, in terms of the label market and inflation there still is this overall concern that the economy isn't where it needs to be which could dent gasoline demand which could also show that you know there's also now this weird timing with people you know we were expected three rate cuts at the beginning of the year that was the sentiment now we only expect one we also saw fed governor lisa cook on tuesday say that a rate cut is likely if the economy performs as expected but declined to say when the u.s central bank will act a quote from the fed was the decision on interest rate is still in the mid or this is a uh uh, Dennis Kistler, he's a SVP of trading over at BOK Financial. A decision on interest rates is still mixed, and most of the crude market is priced in a quarter percent cut by September. So we better hope that comes, or else it's going to be super interesting. Um, seems to be what's going on. 
there's a lot of then geopolitical stuff. You know, the war in Ukraine seems to be going get, get escalating more while the war while the war in Gaza seems to be winding down. So there seems to be some some crazy political things going on. But all that being said, I think the geopolitical pressures could could continue to support prices in the short term, even if we don't necessarily have the best demand forecast outlook. You know, final article I wanted to cover here too: Texas natural gas prices turn negative even amid heat wave in a pretty unexpected kind of turn of events we saw u.s spot natural gas prices specifically in the permian drop below zero on tuesday regardless of the fact that we're having record heat waves right now throughout and this is mainly due to the fact that we saw pipeline maintenance that was able to strand some gas out there um kinder morgan's permian highway gas pipeline was offering at reduced capacity due to necessary co- repairs which basically contributed to the price plunge so people were forced to shut in their stuff we did see you know next day prices for waha fell to below negative one dollars that's never it's never good it marks the 18th occurrence of negative pricing in waha this year so don't be fooled guys if you're you know you know we we, we talk to investors all the time who are looking to get into oil and gas looking to invest in projects I, I take calls all the day from people just wanting to learn. And I tell people this, you're investing in a project in, you know, someone calls you up and say, we're drilling a well in West Texas. Ask them what their gas takeaway solution is, because if there's none and they're accounting for gas in their revenue projections, they're pulling a fast one and pulling the wool over your eyes. Because Unless they're Bitcoin mining. Well, obviously, but that's gas yep. takeaway. If that is correct. Your gas takeaway problem is, oh, we're bringing in on-site Bitcoin mining. But the difference with on-site Bitcoin mining is most people who bring in on-site Bitcoin mining don't participate in the upside of Bitcoin. All they do is have a someone to take away. Now, hold on, let me finish, Stu. All that you do is usually have somebody to pay it. Now, there are ways you can structure a deal to where you can actually participate on the upside of Bitcoin. The problem is then you're going to have to pay some capital for the servers that go on site. That's the difference. If you want no capital spend, but just someone to take away your gas because you yep. can't sell it to the market otherwise, oh, all these Bitcoin miners will feed in. The problem is they're only buying it for 50, 75 cents. That's oh, yeah. the difference. But yep. if you get it on the capital side, then you might be able to participate on the upside of Bitcoin if that's your thing. So point is, it's all to think about Waha and the Permian Basin's getting slammed, though, with gas takeaway, you know, pretty crazy, below negative. There is an expansion that's happening right now or, or that did happen to that Kinder Morgan Permian pipeline that was uh, done in December of 23. Hopefully we they can get this back. It looks like June 27th or in a few days will be when they'll turn. So until June then, 27th or June 20s of 27. <laughs> Well, hopefully it's 2024, but it could be June 27th, 2027. You never know. But that's all I got, Stu. What else do you got? Oh, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting one. Today is Wednesday. Tomorrow will be the debate. And I want to see if he comes out all hyped up and juiced up, as Trump said. It's it's whatever cocktail they're both going to be on. I want. I want access to that cocktail. Oh, absolutely. Uh, they're both going to be hyped up. You know it. Oh, I know. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll tell you, it is an absolute hoot what's going to happen. And then when you have uh, Julia Zahn's being released right beforehand, you can't buy this kind of entertainment around Oro, Michael. No, I, you know. Uh, quick thoughts. I'm glad Assange is free. I think there's a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of chicanery that happened around there and I'm all for a free press too. I'm not trying to go to jail. For, you know, I'm trying to leak government documents at Newsbeat. So I want to make sure that. We, oh, no, uh, we, no, we, we, we don't believe in. Idea. Yeah, we, we believe in a free just, press, just, but yeah, I can't believe she didn't drone him, you know, on the way out to the thing there. That wow. was a great line. What? Why can't we drone him? Good grief. Yes. Yeah, now you're turning. Now you're turning it into a, a verb. That's crazy. So I didn't. She did. So with uh, that, well, that's all I've got with that. So we'll let you guys get on out of here and start your day. We appreciate everybody checking us out. World's greatest podcast, Energy News Beat. For Stuart Torley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.